Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the video. One of the most important aspects to me of any RC build is the hardware. Nuts, bolts, screws, washers. This is what literally holds your car together. And I mean literally, literally, not Gen Z figuratively, literally. I always use high quality rated and graded fasteners from a reputable industrial source. Most fasteners you find in the RC hobby world just aren't that great. Now, I've been inside Chinese and Taiwanese factories more times than I can count. They're great at producing things at high quantity and low cost. For whatever reason, they don't necessarily follow the international ISO and DIN standards for fastener design and quality. I usually just throw away any fasteners that come stock since I don't know the quality or the origin. Then I use high quality fasteners that I know conform to international standards. This is not a paid promotion. I usually get all my hardware from McMaster Car. They used to only sell to um, industrial commercial businesses, but now any individual can set up an account with a credit card, order as few parts as you like, and it'll arrive at your house in one to two days. These are guaranteed to be top quality rated fasteners. The shipping isn't cheap, so combine your orders, and it's a great source for fasteners that you know are going to meet the highest standards. Here's a look at how I organize my hardware and maybe this will give you some ideas. These are Amazon Basics organizers and I like them because they have these individual trays rather than fixed dividers with little slots. So you can't ever lose your parts underneath the dividers. They come in two sizes, the smaller size and the bigger size. Unfortunately, they don't have a great mix of container sizes. So I bought several extra and uh, I have all these big dividers left over because um, I took all the small dividers and combined them into this one. I got these in part because I also like the color orange. The latches are super robust. They haven't broken or popped open. And I think Amazon's only selling one of these two sizes right now, but there is a different brand of what I believe is the exact same organizer under a different brand name. I'll put a link in the description. So this one here is all my three millimeter hardware, and I've labeled all the bins with the black Sharpie. If you make a mistake, you can just rub off the Sharpie with uh, acetone, comes right off and you can relabel them. This one here is my 2.5 millimeter hardware and some two millimeter hardware. And I have this smaller, con the smaller container stored in here that has all my rod ends. Then I've got all my chassis spacers. Then I've got miscellaneous parts. And finally, all my electrical hardware and the second big bin I have is bigger hardware shocks drive shafts and again I have some uh, smaller bins inside with spacers all labeled and this one is uh, m3 titanium fasteners Let's take a closer look at the M3 hardware. These are all organized by size and by type. I use almost entirely Torx head fasteners because when screws are small, I, it really helps to have the star-shaped torque rather than a hex to keep things from stripping. And every single three millimeter fastener uses the exact same size Torx wrench. It's a T10. Now I have everything labeled by size. All of the button head and pan heads are here. And then in the back, these are all flat heads. I have shim washers here. And inside I have a second size, a smaller container of different size shim washers. So they don't take up too many compartments. Here I have all my washers. And I have the thicknesses of the washers uh, labeled, uh, just so I know. And then I have a thing of aluminum washers for uh, 
low strength, lightweight applications. Got my servo hardware, rod end ball hardware, and a few other random things in here. But this is mostly the uh, M3 three millimeter fastener bin. This is a good time to talk about the different type of fasteners. This here is a flat head, which if you don't want the bolt head protruding, um, this would be in a countersink. The downside is that uh, when you tighten this, it tends to split whatever plastic or uh, substrate is underneath it. Hex heads are super common, and I only use those if I can't access turning the fastener from the top, because you turn these from the side. Then the next family of bolts is basically your socket heads, and those socket heads come in three different types. There's the socket head cap screw, a pan head, and a button head. When you're looking at torque screws, they really only come in pan head and button head. And for some reason, you can't always get certain lengths in both options. They come in one or the other. This McMaster car site is one of the best organized I've ever seen. You can sort it by fasteners, metric, go down to the size that you need, three millimeter, and then uh, sort by head size. And what I do is I always like to use Torx heads. They don't strip. And then it'll give you a huge selection of all the different Torx fasteners that are available. You can even download 2D drawings or 3D CAD if you're building your vehicle in CAD. Probably the most common bolts worldwide are these basic hex head bolts and they will usually have this number on the top that is the grade of the bolt. This is 8.8, .8. that indicates the hardness or the strength. There's 5.8, 8.8, 10.9, and 12.9, and the higher the number, the higher the strength and the hardness. Now on round heads and flat heads, you usually don't see the markings because there's not room for them. Flat heads like this should really only be used in applications where you need the bolt head to sit flush. For example, on the bottom of your skid where you don't want the bolt heads sticking out. The downside to flathead bolts is that they put pressure on the plastic or whatever's underneath that can tend to split or break. So I tend to avoid these unless I really need the clearance. Here's a quick look at some of the key dimensions on fasteners. Now, Torx fasteners with this type of head usually only come in what's called pan head or button head. I haven't really seen them in a traditional socket head like this. Socket heads are the tallest at three millimeters. Pan heads are kind of in the middle and button heads are the lowest head. As far as diameter, socket heads are the smallest. Again, pan heads in the middle and button heads are the widest. This is important because this might not fit in the same hole that um, a, a smaller head might fit. So you need to be aware. The good thing about a larger head is it distributes the pressure better underneath the bolt head. Of course, a washer does the same thing, but just be aware that the sizes are a little bit different. This is a Bossard catalog that I got many, many years ago. It's basically the Bible for uh, bolts and I've kept it on my bookshelf and refer to it all the time. Here's a typical spec sheet from inside this catalog and you can see up at the top that they specify what standard these bolts they're selling adhere to. There's usually DIN, ISO, or ANSI. These are international standards accepted everywhere and when you buy a bolt that's graded like this you know exactly what to expect from the dimensions and the strength and the tolerance. And like I said, a lot of bolts coming out of Asia are low cost and don't necessarily meet any of these standards. One thing that's interesting is if you're a designer making a new product, there are certain sizes that are not recommended for new designs. This was an effort a long time ago by the fastener industry to try to reduce the total number of bolts in the world. So you'll see that 14, 16, 22, 27 to 42, if you're doing a new design, they prefer that you don't use these bolt diameters. They're trying to phase them out at some point. 
Now, I don't know how successful they're going to be, but uh, they're also trying to phase out these lengths, 14, 18, and 22. What's interesting, though, is over time, the available bolt options have actually increased. You can now get a 3 as well as a 28 and all the way up to 70 in length for M3 fasteners. Another thing that's important is to look at the strength of the bolt that you're considering. Stainless steel, I use, mostly use stainless steel because for RC rigs, it's usually strong enough. And you can see that this particular stainless steel is 100,000 PSI. That's what the strength of the fastener will meet. Now, alloy steel, which is not stainless, is usually a little bit stronger. This is 110, and you can find a high strength stainless steel if you want. This one goes all the way up to 140. You want to also be careful on the price. These stainless steel fasteners are five bucks for 100. These high strength steel ones are five bucks for 50. And this really exotic stainless steel one, these are five dollars each. That's one fastener is five dollars. So I usually buy these stainless ones right here and they're plenty strong. Here's another table that shows um, a different stainless steel bolt. These are only a strength of 70. For RC, 10th scale crawlers, they're usually fine. That's usually what I buy. If you want to buy black, it's still stainless, but it has a really nice black finish on it, but they're quite expensive. The strongest bolts you can find are alloy uh, steel, and those go up to about 140, so really strong. They're not necessarily corrosion resistance. Again, might not matter for your application. Black oxide is a coating that uh, sort of helps with corrosion resistance, but it will rust over time. These blue ones, I think, are custom to McMaster Carr. I'm not exactly sure uh, why they make them. I think it might be for sorting, but uh, they come in blue, and that's the only color there is. Zinc plated is more corrosion resistant than black oxide, and usually about the same corrosion resistance as stainless. They're pretty inexpensive, and probably the most common is going to be zinc plated alloy steel because they're strong and corrosion resistant. Again, check out the price. It can be wildly variable. For example, these black oxide ones are $7 just for 10, whereas if you want silver stainless steel, you can get 100 for 7 bucks. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a couple things and maybe you can level up your fastener game and also your organization.